We would be honored if you would join us. Everyone's invited, of course. Hey, Star Wars fans, thanks for joining me for the first episode of my question and answer series. So I'm pretty excited to kick off. Did get a bunch of questions for my episode zero, which initially kicked this series off. So uh, if you've got any other questions uh, that I didn't answer tonight, uh, please drop them in the comments below and I'll get to them next next time for episode two. So we're actually going to kick off um, straight into it. I have two members to my channel, so they get their answers uh, done first. I've got them all listed here on my phone. So we'll start off with Darth Phoenix 619, good friend. He says, hey Jesse, character you'd like to be see mo you'd like most to be made in the Black series. I immediately thought Quinlan Voss. Um, there were a bunch of other ones I thought of, but Quinlan Voss was the first one that came to, came to mind to me. So I'm going to roll with him. He's been one of my favorite characters for a long time. Great Jedi, great character. I'd really love to see a um, canonized version of him into the Black series. There's some, been some great figures of him uh, in three and three quarter in the past. Uh, my favorite probably being the Clone Wars one, so I'd love to see a realistic version of that. And next question is from another member, Matt Mando. Uh, he says, favorite Legends character story that is no longer canon. I went with Darth Plagueis by James Luceno. That is just an absolutely incredible book. Um, you could still quite easily slot that into canon now. I think it would work an absolute treat. Uh, sounds like they may end up going in a slightly different direction, um, depending on how this High Republic era sort of comes into being, because uh, by the end of that, we might be getting close to some of the early stuff that we see in, uh, that we read in Darth Plagueis. So definitely recommending Darth Plagueis. The other one I was pretty close to going with was the Bane trilogy, uh, Darth Bane. That was a fantastic trilogy of books. Um, those four books, Darth Plagueis and the Darth Bane trilogy, are my favorite uh, all-time Legends books. So, But I saw sort of stick with one, go with Darth Plagueis. That was a great one. So next question comes from Leslie Bedingfield. Do you think we'll see a six-inch Luke's Red 5 X-Wing? I don't think we're going to get any vehicles in that size in the six inch scale again um, unless it ends up being a Haslab project uh, the TIE fighter that came out a few years ago it's just it was it was a hard sell um, particularly if you're here in Australia you know that initially retailed for 400 bucks which is just you know it's a lot of cash um, I ended up picking mine up for about a hundred I think it was um, which was like a reasonable price for the thing and at the end of the day I still had nowhere to put it so it's basically ended up in storage and it more or less ended up being a hundred dollar tie pilot repaint so it's it's hard I'd would, would I love to see it absolutely I'd love to see a big red 5 x-wing um, plenty of plenty of um, people would grab it I'm sure but I just think for the price point I think we're talking too big I think in uh, for vehicles for Black Series, I think we're going to stick with smaller scale stuff like speeders, um, beasts, tauntauns, dewbacks, etc. Uh, and you know the odd land speeder, maybe something, maybe something like a pod racer, perhaps. But even then, we're talking that's probably going to be a little bit big too. That wouldn't be much smaller than say the the X wing hull. So I don't think we're going to get big vehicles like that for the Black Series, but. Never say never. Next one comes from Ed Five, fellow South Aussie. What is your most prized Star Wars piece in your collection? That is a really hard one because I have a lot of amazing sentimental objects that I have in my collection. I have some absolutely incredible items that have been gifted to me. Stuff that has great memories, but I think the most prized would probably have to be the Jabba Sail Barge as a long time 3.75 inch collector that thing is just an absolute dream come true um and anyone else that has the sail barge would would understand and feel the same way um it's sitting here right next to me and you know when that thing is lit up and populated with figures it's it's incredible um second only to i 
a Moss Eisley Cantina playset would be incredible too. Um, but the barge is just it's a stunning item. Um, I hope somehow, some way, Hasbro are able to put this thing out again one day in the future. I don't think they will. Um, they were pretty adamant that it was going to be a you know Haslab only. Um, but you know, if they listen to us fans and we're loud enough and we ask for it, they might they might do it again. So. Again, that's a never say never, but I'm going to go with the Jabba Sail Barge as my most prized possession. Uh, question here from Jeff, Fall Down the Mountain. How did you discover, get into Star Wars? Um, so, I was probably five or six years old, I can't actually remember. A uh, little story, this won't take long. Um, basically, my parents had some good friends that were back neighbours um, over the back fence. So we used to jump jump the fence and go and have dinner and stuff like that. We ended up putting a gate in between because we just the family's become great friends. Um, I had a younger sister. I have a younger sister. I had a younger sister. I still do. Um, and they had two daughters who were sort of one was old. One was a year older than me. One was a year younger than me, but a year older than my sister. So being sort of stuck in the middle, I wasn't always interested in in playing with the three with the three girls as a kid um sometimes i just need to get away and you know i was probably bugging my parents a little bit to to do something but um their parents my my, my folks friends they they said come on we'll put it we'll put a movie on for you and i remember him picking up the tape and it said star wars 2 on it um for some reason just put it on as entertainment you know empire strikes back didn't know what it was I was immediately captivated by things like Chewbacca, Yoda, etc. And I was hooked ever since. And it probably wasn't for a couple of years until um, the figures came out. So I'd, I'd say I'd probably be six, because it was a little bit closer to when the Power of the Force figures came out that I really struck an interest with Star Wars. So I'd say that'd be it. Uh, Matthew Martin, what is your most needed original trilogy the vintage collection figure for hasbro to produce i'm gonna go with a new sim alu um also known as the imperial dignitary from the original power of the force vintage vintage line he's the tall skinny imperial dignitary in the purple i'd love to see an updated him um over the years we have had the other imperial dignitary sort of uh at least two of them i've got two of them but i'm not i, can't, I don't think there are any more um there's Crin Bliss, Crin Blister Vinay, and there's another one that I'm blanking on his name, but I have those two. Still don't have the original vintage Simalu, which I would love, but I'd love to see an updated version of him, um, just to stand with the other two updated, you know, still sort of modern-ish, you know, they could be repacked, they don't need updating, but I think Simalu would be a great one to see in the vintage collection in the future, that'd be fantastic. Um, also, putting a Power of the Force figure on a vintage collection style card would be absolutely incredible. Uh, he had a second question here. Um, do you have any vintage figures in your collection? I do, I actually. Have, I have uh, probably close to 100. I'm sort of in the middle of a mission of collecting the last 17, plus Blue Snaggletooth. Um, so, I've, I've got all the other figures from before the last 17 except Blue Snaggletooth. Um, I'm basically just trying to build a collection of characters as opposed to like nice minty, fresh versions. Um, but if along the way I sort of come across uh, slightly better versions than what I have, I will update them if the price is right. But for now, I just want to get the full collection of individual characters. Um, probably not too worried about Ewoks and droids. They seem to be very, very sparse, sparse here in Australia. So... I probably won't worry about them too much. Um, rarely ever see any of them around, so I'm not too worried about the droids and Ewok stuff, but um, I'll try and stick with uh, Last 17. I do have, I think I have three Last 17 figures now, so it's, you know, it's a work in progress, and some of them do get up in price, so I'll, I'll just waiting for the right price. So it's no rush. I'm sort of playing the long game with the vintage stuff. It's a nice ongoing... Uh, collecting project. I have these little missions in as a collector, um, and that's probably my long-standing goal is to get a full set of characters. Uh, next question comes from 
I hope I don't butcher your name, but it's Slotovan Milosevic. I really hope I don't butcher your name. I hope that I hope I got that right. He says, I like the new trilogy, and I'm a Star Wars fan since 1980. Anyway, you were from the millennial generation. You are few of them who doesn't hate have that hate. Why? Um, why don't I hate the new trilogy? Because I don't really hate any Star Wars. Um, Star Wars is my escape from things I don't like. <laughs> um, not so much, you know. It, it's as soon as a hobby becomes something you hate or dislike, um, whether it's any sort of element of it, it can create bitterness. Um, uh, you know, hate leads to anger, ang uh, anger leads to hate, hate leads to suffering. Um, it's a path to the dark side. I'm not, I'm not that way inclined. I'm, I'm optimist. I'm a positive person. I am. Do, do I think that all the all the films are perfect? Absolutely not. But um, I take them for what they are. I enjoy them for what they are. Um, I can be critical when I need to be. Um, but I'd rather just you know lay praise on what on what I love because it's about keeping keeping optimistic and keeping a positive mindset for something that I do love and something that's been part of my life for a very long time. So, um, you know, the old other movie coming out might watch another movie that I hate so um but I don't hate a lot of things at all I like hates a very um negative emotion that I try to you know work work my way around when I do have feelings of um anger and hate I do try to work work through them and uh try and find a positive spin and you know bring my mind back around to a positive positive mindset so hope that answers your question there uh Kerry Mahoney. Do you just collect Star Wars or are there other toy lines and or random stuff you pick up? Um, <clears throat> for the... It's, it's, I'd say it's 99.9% .9 Star Wars. I do muck around with some other stuff. I did get into the Marvel Legends stuff quite a lot over the last sort of few, few years. Um, but I've pretty much thinned that collection down to maybe 10 figures now. Just... Um, just favorite characters and such. Like I've got a end game, Captain America an end game, Iron Man, um, Captain Marvel, Black Panther, a few other characters. Um, also got the six inch Deadpool, um, movie figures, which I will con continue to collect if they do put out any more characters. Um, but yeah, it's sort of, if, if there's a figure I like a character I like from something else, like maybe I'll pick it up. Um, but for the most part, I try my hardest to stick to Star Wars. Sometimes I do dabble with other toy lines. Um, for the most part, last last one, one non-Star Wars figure I picked up was a NECA King Kong, which I just thought was a fantastic looking figure. I'd watched some reviews on YouTube and it was a reasonable price and I really, really like that figure. So I picked that up and uh, yeah, like, and I've got a Buzz Lightyear um, which was really, really cool too. So just characters that I like, I occasionally pick up random figures from, from those lines. <coughs> Excuse me. Next question comes from Mark Karpf. I hope I've pronounced your last name correctly. Do you have any power of the force two in your collection? I know they are much maligned, but other than my vintage collection from when I was a kid, it's really where my collection started. So they kind of hold a special place with me. I'm 100% with you there, Mark. Um, I do have a pretty solid collection of Power of the Force 2. Um, that is another line I am, you know, working to complete in terms of just having all the figures, just a collection of loose figures, like, on display. Like, um, I would love to get to do a video at some point. Because um, I do have quite a few of them now. Um, they were the figures I grew up on, you know, like that's my childhood, the nineties, you know, I, that was my vintage basically as a, you know, collector now being born in 1987. Uh, yeah. Power of the Force 2 was, was my childhood in terms of figures. I did lose a lot of them as a kid. Uh, a lot of, a lot of them got stolen by someone, by a quote unquote friend. Um, so it's been, it's been really, really fun to actually go back in recent years and pick up some of these figures that are part of my childhood. I still have 
half a dozen of my original figures that I had as a kid, so... But to have, you know, a Luke Skywalker in my hand again, like, it's just so good. And and picking up figures that I wished I had as a kid that I just didn't, so that's been great fun. Next question comes from Super Awesome Geek Show. What was the very first Star Wars action figure you ever got as a kid? Again, Power of the Force 2, uh, Darth Vader and Chewbacca. I feel like it may have been my birthday of that first year that I saw Empire Strikes Back. Um, this is just the way my memory works. My birthday's in November, and I'm pretty sure I got more Star Wars figures for Christmas that year, because I remember just having a bunch of other figures um, very, very quickly. Um, but yeah, Chewie and Vader were my first two Star Wars figures ever. Uh, next question comes from Clink. Hi, Jesse. What is your favorite Imperial Trooper and Imperial Vehicle? I went with TIE Fighter Pilot and the TIE Interceptor as a ship. Um, I love the TIE Pilot. I don't know what it is. I wish that new TIE Pilot a vintage collection figure was newer. Um, that figure's a little bit dated, <laughs> but I don't know. There's something about the something about like Black Stormtrooper armor, basically, that just gets me. And I love this. I love the TIE Interceptor. It's just so badass. J Guys Custom asks, "What is your favorite Imperial armor design, and who is your favorite Imperial officer?" Favorite Imperial armor design, slightly different than my favorite trooper. So I went with a different answer for this one. I went with a scout trooper. There's something about the scout trooper that's just really, really cool. Um, and in terms of Imperial officer, I went with Viz. He's I like him because he's able to sort of suit up, command a squadron down on Hoth. You know, he's got the armor, he's got the headpiece, um, the head armor. He's in command of a bunch of tanks, basically, like the AT-ATs. I just thought he was a cool, cool villain. <clears throat> uh, next one comes from Baron Chadwick. Do you think the Old Republic will be made into a movie? Uh, probably not any time soon, I wouldn't imagine. Um, I think they will go back into the deep, deep history of the Star Wars galaxy, Star Wars universe. Um, but I don't think they will touch that story. Um, there's way too much lore. There's, it's, it's, it is almost sacred to a lot of people as well. Um, so I think they need to tread lightly if they're going to touch any sort of Old Republic stuff. I'd love them to go back and work with uh, Darth Revan. I think he's a fantastic character and has a lot of potential uh, for a film trilogy series or a TV series. I'd love to see that one day. Go back into the uh, yeah far deep, deep past and explore some, some of those characters that um, are no longer canon but could absolutely fit in. Uh, Lucas, thanks for, thanks for your question. What was your favourite Star Wars theory leading up to its movie or TV show? I never really delved into the theories, but um, there was one where Kylo Ren's true identity was Luke Skywalker himself. I think that would have been really freaking interesting. And uh, <laughs> it would have been really, really cool. David McFadden. Hi, Jesse. What is your favourite original trilogy moment or scene? I'm going to go with the Battle of Carcoon over the Sarlacc Pit. Just exhilarating from start to beginning I love all the Jabba's Palace stuff at the start of Return of the Jedi I just everything about it is awesome Luke Skywalker absolutely cleaning house on the barge and on the skiffs so good good friend Palpatine 1975 says a question for you friend which toys or stuff are the most sentimental to you from fans or friends now I have been lucky enough to receive a lot of gifts from people over the years a lot of friends um i don't like to call my viewers fans <laughs> um they're friends um i do have a lot of amazing amazing items that have been gifted to me over the years and it's so hard to narrow down which would be my favorite um palpatine 1975 himself sent me the rancor the legacy collection rancor years ago um be very much very eight or nine years ago perhaps um that thing is still one of my favorite pieces in my 3.75 inch collection um and he most recently sent me the uh rogue one tank um but 
yeah i can't really can't narrow it down there are some amazing pieces in my collection they all mean a lot to me um i can almost remember every single item i've received from someone and i can tell you exactly who sent it to me um which, you know that, that sentimental value to a lot of my a lot of my belongings in my collection is you know it's what separates it from something that i buy myself uh sci-fi i know you will say yes to this and since zuton has been re-released Chalman's cantina display place it i damn hope so man like i'd love that you know we've got such a slew, good slew of aliens from that scene and they did the i recently just put together the uh, cardboard playset from the power of the force days reinforced it so it looks really cool and uh stable and uh yeah that was that was really cool piece so i sort of did that did a little overview of that in my um most recent sort of i did a sort of a semi collection video where i was re redoing my 3.7 inch collection and uh just sort of moving stuff around and, and that and i did a little bit of a showcase on that so go and check that out but yeah i'd love to see like you know just maybe like four different sets where you can build the whole cantina that'd be so good uh collecting unleashed ask what was your inspiration to start making youtube videos seeing other folks sharing the um sorry i started reading my answer yeah what was your inspiration to start making youtube videos basically um my, what i've written down here i didn't answer all these questions beforehand uh seeing other folks sharing their collections basically was inspirational and uh having an out giving providing an outlet to share my passion of star wars and star wars collecting um with other people and you know i've made a lot of long time friends out of out of the youtube community and it's and it's been an absolute awesome ride it's great to have somewhere to to share my passion and share my share my collection and uh get to show it to lots of people around the world and to be able to see other people's collections as well um that's been part of the long time fun uh cranky rancor asks can you fix all the problems at disney <laughs> uh you know what? i could probably fix some of them i'm uh you know i'd like to think i'd bring some like hardcore fans perspective into into it as opposed to a uh corporate corporate standpoint i can't imagine they'd survive very long but um you know if they're simply marketing towards the diehards where there aren't many of us in comparison to the everyday consumer so it's uh yeah no i'll, le I'll leave that one to the professionals i think there's uh the people who in the big bucks but if they want to pay me big bucks to help solve some issues call me up uh milky way skywalker i've just been watching you for a few months now thank you i appreciate that so i've got a lot of catching up to do uh, i appreciate your channel because you definitely seem to prefer collecting loose 3.75 from many different star wars series collections and lines which is what i like to collect what star wars series collections or lines would you get rid of first if you had to so that's that was an interesting question because there's a lot of different lines um but probably my least favorite line was that saga legends slash mission series from 2013 that was the aftermath of vintage collection sort of finishing late 2012 early 2013 uh clone wars line wrapped up early 2013 and they were just replaced it with these very uninspired five poa figures um that were just they were weren't good at all they were just they were bad <laughs> uh 2014 they started turning around a little bit when they had some rebels figures coming out as well you started seeing still seeing five poa sort of mission series but the the characters looked a little bit better but that initial run from 2013 was just was just horrible um that that was not a good line um they should have just kept going with what they were doing um blacked out ewoks he says oh, my question is which youtube channels inspired you to create your own channel many moons ago um I'm going to give it to these three guys over in England. Sithlaw229, Daniel East1000, and the Darth Prime. Um, these are the three guys I sort of come across the earliest um, looking for sort of Star Wars related toy content on YouTube. And uh, 
yeah, these guys already had a little bit of a community going back then. So, you know, Sith Lord's been in it for a long time. He's, I think he started 2007. He's had his channel since. Um, it's, it's, it's been a long time. So, um, yeah, those guys definitely inspired me. And Daniel East gave me a really good leg up when I started my channel. You know, he was, he, he helped promote, he helped share my channel around and, help some of my really early subscribers jump on board and uh, follow follow my adventure here on YouTube. So for that, I'm really appreciative. Darth Prime, he's just an absolute cracker of a dude. Love that dude. <laughs> he's the best. Um, he joined me on a live stream a couple weeks ago. I uh, hope he gets to do it again soon. Uh, this weekend, I will have Sith Lord 229 joining me, hopefully. Uh, he was going to try and jump on last week, but because of the time difference uh, from last week's stream, uh, we decided to wait a week, so I need to I need to get in touch with him, make sure he's still keen this weekend. Um, the last question for the week, and we'll wrap it up. Javier Chavoya, do you own any of the comic pack figures? And would you review some for the future? I do have quite a few of the comic pack figures. Um, there were a lot of lines over the years, a lot of the lot of the lo lines over the years that had sort of that comic pack aspect to the to the line. Um, you scroll way back through my channel. I've got over 600 videos on my channel. There are some of those figures that I've reviewed way, 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 way back in the past. But if there are any any requests, I'd be more than happy to, um, you know, record some reviews for, for some older figures. More than happy to fulfill some requests. So that wraps up my first episode of Q&A. Any other questions, drop them below. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do and hit the little notification bell wherever that is and uh, you can be alerted as soon as one of my videos drops. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Drop your questions below and we'll get them next week. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time, may the force be with you, always. We're a little rushed, so if you'll just get on board, we'll get on it.